Hi, I'm John Dubois, and I want to welcome you to another edition of Weekly Rhythms here at Olive Baptist Church. You know, this year is winding down. Uh, New Year's coming around the corner, and it's been a crazy, uh, mystifying year. All kinds of crazy things have been, been going on. And it reminds me of that book in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the story of Jonah. And you're, very, you're probably really familiar with that story because we all know that Jonah uh, ran from God and, and ended up in the belly of the whale. And it's just a, it was a fascinating story to read about. But as you think about Jonah and his resistance to not go to Nineveh and tell them that God's judgment was coming unless they repented, you and I have that same struggle in, in obeying the Lord at times. We, we wonder if, if, if we should obey God or should we just be comfortable in what we're going to do. And so there's an inner struggle uh, when you and I have to obey the Lord. And it's a spiritual battle that goes on. You know, the military is very reliant on camouflage. If you think about it, uh, the military uh, puts men and women in camouflage and they uh, paint their, uh, their vehicles with camouflage. Why? Because they want to hide from the enemy. They want to blend in and not be exposed. I think there are times in our lives as Christians where, that we have enemies of obedience in our lives and we've camouflaged them. Why? Because we have gotten very caught up in our life and our comfort and our schedule. And I think we, we sometimes we don't realize that those enemies of obedience are there. I wanna give you some, some of those enemies to obedience. Number one, the first one's pride. Uh, that's just good old fashioned, I'm not gonna do God what you want me to do. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I have my own agenda. And, and then the second fear of, uh, excuse me, the second uh, uh, enemy to uh, obedience is fear. Lord, if I obey you, what's going to happen to me? I, I don't know if I want to pay that price. That's a real struggle that we have. Uh, that third uh, uh, enemy to obedience is, is just busyness. We're just so caught up in our schedule and we don't have time to do what God wants to do. But what we're really saying to God is that we are too important for God's agenda, God's plan. That fourth enemy of obedience is self-esteem. I think that's a big one. I think deep down in our hearts, we wonder, what do people think if I do this? What, what will people say if I obey God? There's a real struggle there. Finally, the, that last enemy to obedience is forgetfulness. We oftentimes forget that God's will for us is for our betterment. The Lord might ask you to do something difficult, but the Lord has a plan. He has an ulterior motive. He wants you to grow and be more like His Son, Christ. You know, Jesus said it clearly in, in John 14, 15. He gathered His disciples together and He said, Guys, if you love me, you will obey my commands. It's as simple as that. Loving Jesus and obeying Jesus go hand in hand. You, you can't love Jesus without obeying Jesus, and you can't obey Jesus without loving Jesus. So let's return to our story. Jo Jonah has taken a passage on this ship, heading in the opposite direction of Nineveh, and God has brought up this great storm, and the boat is, is being smashed, and, 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 and there's flooding, and there's all kinds of terror going on board. And, and I, I wanna use this story to show us what it means to simply obey Jesus. What does it mean to have simple obedience? The first step that we've got to do if we're going to obey God is we've got to get out of the way. Uh, Jonah 1, 11 through 12, then they, the sailors and the crew, said to Jonah, what shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. Verse 12, Jonah said to them, Pick me up and hurl me into the sea, then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. We've got to get out of the way. Jonah began to connect the dots. He realized, I'm, I'm getting in the way here. God is judging these people because of my disobedience. Then the second thing that we've got to do if we're going to obey God is number two, we've got to get on track. The Bible says in verse 14, Therefore they, the crew, they called out to the Lord. 
These people were pagan. They didn't even believe in God. They had their own gods. But they said, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life and lay not on us innocent blood for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. Getting on track with God simply says, Lord, I'm making myself available. They didn't even believe in God and they were making themselves available. They were ready to do whatever it took to get that storm to go away. We've got to be ready and willing to say, God, I'm on track. I want to do what you want me to do. The third step in obeying God is simply this, go in faith. Verse 15, so they picked up Jonah and they hurled him into the sea and the sea ceased from its raging. You've simply got to just say, Lord, I go in faith. I do what you want me to do by faith, not really knowing what the outcome will be. Well, it's simple to see the outcome here was good. When they threw Jonah overboard, immediately the storm went away. We're not always guaranteed that something great is going to happen that we can see. But I'm telling you, when you and I obey God, good things happen. We might not be able to see them, but God's working. God's moving in our midst. Finally, the fourth step to obedience is simply, number four, give God the glory. Look at verse 16, Romans, uh, excuse me, Jonah 1. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord, and they made vows. These people went from being pagans to sacrificing and glorifying God and making vows to live for Him. I'm telling you, when you and I obey the Lord, we need to give God the glory because that's exactly what God's doing. This new year's coming up, and I want to just encourage you not to make a bunch of resolutions that you're not going to keep. Simply just be obedient to God in the new year. Let's pray. Let's ask God to help us do that. Father in heaven, Lord, help us to be obedient to you. Lord, this new year is coming up. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know the challenges that wait for us. But God, most important thing is that we love you and we obey you. We pray that you would give us that power to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I want to thank you for joining me today for Weekly Rhythms. I want to wish you a happy new year. Hope you have a great year with you and your family and your friends. And uh, looking forward to seeing you the next time we get together for Weekly Rhythms. God bless you.